Welcome to MIGS Made Clear, where we break down microinvasive glaucoma surgery into bite-sized chunks so you can walk away with a much greater understanding and feeling more MIGS confident. Today, in this part 1B video, we're going to finish talking about the MIGS classification of goniotomy slash trabeculotomy with a focus on the trabeculotomy procedures, the ideal patient scenarios, and contraindications of both goniotomy and trabeculotomy. By the way, my name is Dr. Constance Okege, and I'm an Ivy League trained glaucoma specialist and cataract surgeon. This MIGS Made Clear six-part video series is supported through an unrestricted educational grant from New World Medical, Nova Eye Medical, and Site Sciences. Remember, in the Part 1A video, we reviewed angle anatomy, discussed the mechanism of action of this class, goniotomy slash trabeculotomy, how the areas of resistance in the outflow system are affected, and then we went into some detail on the available mix procedures within the goniotomy techniques. Refer to that video for details. All of the previous devices discussed have been goniotomy procedures, where TM tissue is excised with a device to expose Schlem's canal and the outflow channels. These devices allow for partial removal of the TM, and when there is at least three clock hours or more of treatment performed, they can then qualify for the CPT code 65820. We will now discuss the trabeculotomy procedures, which can allow for up to 360 degrees of treatment of the trabeculotomy. Mesh work. Let's move on to Gonioscopy Assisted Transluminal Trabeculotomy or GAT. This procedure is indicated for the management of open angle glaucoma and involves an ab interno or an inside the eye approach to perform up to a 360 degree trabeculotomy as opposed to an ab externo where the approach is from the outside where the conjunctiva and sclera is incised. GAT combines the benefits of ab interno goniotomy in that one can access Schlem's canal through a clear corneal incision into the anterior chamber and then make a small micro incision in the trabecular mesh work to then insert a catheter through the Schlem's canal. Here is the GAT in surgical action, incision of the TM, insertion of the catheter into Schlem's canal for 360 degrees, and then inward pulling of the catheter to unroof the trabecular meshwork and expose the collector channels for improved outflow. Trabeculotomy has been found to be particularly beneficial for congenital and juvenile open angle glaucoma, as well as in primary or secondary open angle glaucoma at early, moderate, or severe stages in adults. By preserving the conjunctiva, it facilitates a circumferential treatment of the entire angle, which is also a major plus. Finally, we have the omnisurgical system. This versatile device is indicated for cutting trabecular meshwork tissue during trabeculotomy procedures, as well as delivering small amounts of viscoelastic fluid during ophthalmic surgery, which we will discuss more in a future video. The omni system is implant-free and tissue-sparing and a single-use device that has an ergonomic handle for a secure grip and a finger wheel that allows for the advancement of the cannula into Schlem's canal after piercing the TM with a microcatheter tip. It targets the trabecular meshwork, Schlem's canal, and collector channel ostea, breaking up microadhesions to improve outflow. Here is the omni in surgical action. After incision of the trabecular meshwork, the inserted catheter travels through Schlem's canal by rolling the finger wheel for up to 180 degrees then inward pulling of the catheter is allowed to unroof the trabecular meshwork and expose the collector channels for improved outflow. This can be done up to 360 degrees if it is addressed on both sides. The device is indicated for treating pediatric and adult glaucomas in various stages, and like all the other devices in this class, it provides an excellent option for standalone procedures or one combined with cataract surgery. Overall, an ideal patient for any of these devices in the this class of procedures, goniotomy and trabeculotomy, is controlled or uncontrolled on glaucoma medications as a patient who has an open angle and has a target to achieve less medications by at least one or a target of the mid-teens. We have discussed the indications for these devices as we went along each device. Now, in regards to the main contraindications for these devices, they include a poor corneal view of the angled structures on gonioscopy. If you can't see it, you can't treat it. Also, neovascular glaucoma, which zips up the angle with abnormal vessels and synechiae. Traumatic glaucoma is contraindicated 
associated with significant angle recession that distorts and damages anatomy. Malignant glaucoma, again, which damages anatomical structures. Major caution is present for patients with chronic angle closure, narrow inlets with plateau iris, high peripheral anterior synechiae, or uveitic glaucoma, again, due to the potential for damage or irregularity of the angle structures and possibly inability to visualize the angle or to properly pass a microcatheter. However, in some cases, goniotomy procedures can be done here, as we mentioned with the trabectome and the KDB glide. For Scion, due to its design, there's also contraindication in patients who have had previous argon laser trabeculoplasty, ab interno devices implanted in or through the Schlem's canal, or prior incisional glaucoma surgeries, including trabeculotomy or goniotomy, as one may not be able to pass the device through Schlem's canal if there is any kind of distortion or damage from those procedures. For the GAD and Omni, these contraindications and cautions also apply in addition to not using uh, these devices in quadrants with previous MIGS implants. If you are enjoying the video, please give a thumbs up and keep watching to the end of the video to find out what topic we will be discussing in the next part two video of the MIGS Made Clear series. Summary. All right, let's recap what we've covered today. We dove into the world of goniotomy and trabeculotomy, starting with a quick review of angle anatomy to lay the groundwork. We explored how these procedures work by removing or unroofing the trabecular meshwork and the inner wall of Schlem's canal to enhance aqueous outflow. We also walked through the different devices that utilize these techniques. Of the goniotomy procedures, we discussed the trabectome, the trabex, Trebex Pro, KDB Glide, Scion, Streamline, and I-Axis. For the trabeculotomies, we discussed the GAT and the Omnisurgical Systems. Each device has its unique features, indications, and contraindications, but they all share the common goal of improving outflow and reducing intraocular pressure in patients with adult and pediatric glaucomas by unroofing the trabecular meshwork, which is an area of high resistance. Before we wrap up, here's what I'd like you to do next to get the most out of the series. First, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any videos in the series. We've got a lot of valuable content coming up that you won't want to miss. Next, if you know other eye care providers who would benefit from this series, share the video with them. Let's spread the knowledge and help more people feel confident about MIGS. While you're waiting for the series to start, I've got some resources for you. Check out my free report, Survey Insights, on understanding the top challenges surgeons face when adopting a new MIGS procedure. You'll find the link in the description box below. This guide is an excellent reference to help you prepare for your journey of adopting a new mix procedure so you have a better understanding of the expectations. And if you're still wondering how well does MIGS even work and what does a good MIGS outcome look like, well, take a look at this guide in the description box as well. Real Life MIGS Success, 15 clinical vignettes showcasing successful outcomes. This will give you a solid understanding of the effectiveness and benefits of these procedures so you can build on momentum to start taking action yourself towards getting these types of results. Additionally, if you want to better understand glaucoma and how to maintain healthy vision, consider getting a copy of the Glaucoma Guidebook, Expert Advice on Maintaining Healthy Vision. I wrote this multi-award winning Johns Hopkins Health Book that empowers patients to protect their eye health through education and taking action. And for those who want a sneak peek of what's to come in our series, download MIGS Made Clear 101, a primer on microinvasive glaucoma surgery. This primer discusses basic angle anatomy, the outflow system, and briefly covers the various MIGS mechanisms of action we will discuss in detail in this series. You can find the link in the description box below. So whether you're dealing with adult or pediatric glaucoma, these goniotomy and trabeculotomy options provide a range of tools to tailor treatment for your patient's needs. I hope this video breakdown helped to clarify this class of MIGS procedures and give you a more solid foundation to feel more confident in choosing the right device or devices for your practice. Let us know how we're doing in the comments below and stay tuned for our next episode where we will be discussing trabecular bypass stents and continuing to make MIGS clear one step at a time. See you soon. This video has been brought to you by the AGE Initiative and iGlaucoma.